Permission to speak, sir. Permission granted, old friend. Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. In today's we're going to take a look at Bumblebee's voice, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Now in the Bavers, Bumblebee's voice has been very inconsistent, from having at the end of the first film while talking to Sam, to him not being able to speak at all in the second through four films, and then for him to get his voice back at the end of the fifth film, with Optimus saying that he last heard Bumblebee's voice when Cybertron fell, when he clearly heard at the end of the 2007 film. So yeah, as you can see, this makes no sense, but today I'm hoping to be able to fix this issue as much as I can, and to give a definitive explanation on Bumblebee's voice, so if we want to figure out this mystery, you have to solve how he lost it. Now in Transformers 2007 and Transformers The Last Night, we hear two very important pieces about Bumblebee's voice. In the 2007 film, Ratchet tells us that his voice box was damaged in battle, and that he was still trying to fix it. But in The Last Night, we hear Optimus say that the last time he heard Bumblebee's voice was during the fall of Cybertron. So with that in mind, Bumblebee either lost his voice during the fall of Cybertron, or during a battle on Earth. Now to these two, him losing his voice on Cybertron is more likely, since if you think about it, during the World War II scene, B doesn't talk whatsoever, and if you're in the middle of a battle, you want to be able to speak to give directions to coordinate your squad, and instead of speaking, Bumblebee does a hand gesture to tell the soldiers to fall in. So with that in mind, it leads towards the fact that Bumblebee did not have his voice on Earth. And if you remember, Bumblebee was part of the Devil's Brigade, a military unit founded in 1942 and is banned in 1944. And we know for a fact that Bumblebee didn't have his voice in 2007. And since we do not have the exact date on when Bumblebee landed on Earth, we can conclude that Bumblebee did not have his voice for around 65 years. So if all this info on a table, we can put the nail in the coffin that he lost his voice during the fall of Cybertron. But now we need to ask, who did he lose it to? And his answer is really just personal preference, since it could have been any Decepticon that could have done it. Now the comics and a general fandom point to finger at Megatron being the one who crushed Bumblebee's voice box, though it's never stated if Megatron actually did it in the films. But since there's no concrete explanation of who did it, and the fact that the Bayverse is officially over, I'd say the most likely answer would be Megatron, since if you remember, he's strong enough to rip an Autobot off his bare hands. Which would also mean that he could easily crush a voice box. But at the end of the day, it's up to personal preference who stripped Bumblebee's voice away from him. But the fandom's general conclusion would be that Megatron was the one who did it. But now let's move on to how Bumblebee got his voice in the first film. Now to explain how he got his voice in the 07 film, we first have to understand how the B-Man speaks. Now throughout the Transformers saga, Bumblebee's voice has evolved after each film. So to make it easy, let's focus on the rules of the 2007 film. Now Bumblebee could speak either through the radio or through his own voice, but due to his voice box being broken, it would sound jumbled up. Now I'm going to show some radio examples, but look for the noise that he makes when switching between channels, since it will come into play later. Can you talk? XM Satellite Radio. Digital, Digital Cable Bridge. Digital Cable Broadcasting System. Message from Starfleet, Captain. Let's get to it. Now for him trying to use his own voice, here are some examples. Sing this stuff, huh? <laughs> And lastly, here's an example when he says thank you to Michaela, along with an example when he's at off the AllSpark. Nice shot. Now as you can see for speaking examples, his voice is not completely lost, it's just damaged, with some words being able to be heard more than others, like when he said thank you and ooh. Now remember how I told you guys to keep in mind the switch between channel sound? Well that appears right before he speaks at the end of the 2007 film. Now if you listen to B-Man's voice, and you may need headphones to hear it in detail, but when he speaks it doesn't sound like a natural voice. It has more of a slight echo to it, sounding like it's coming out of the radio. To show this off, I'm going to play his 2007 voice next to his last night voice so you guys can hear the difference. Permission to speak, sir. I would lay down my life for you. I wish to stay with the boy. You saved Prime. Now to these two voices, the last night one sounds like he's actually speaking, while the 07 one sounds like it's coming out of the radio. But now the question is, how was Bumblebee able to speak somewhat normally through the radio? And well, I think he was able to do this because he combined his normal voice to a radio frequency, letting him to be able to use someone else's voice on the radio and use it to say what he wanted to say. Basically using someone else's voice and speaking through it. Now this is different to how he normally uses radio, where he takes many frequencies and mashes them together. Here's a good example from Dark of the Moon. We're gonna do whatever we can. Make it like it was. You will always be my friend. Sam. You gotta be something else, B. You gotta have a bigger purpose than just me. You can't be the end all be all in your life. What? <laughs> your purpose. Sam! I don't know. As you can see, it's many different voices jumbled up into a sentence, but when you compare it to Bumblebee's in the first film, I wish to stay with the boy. It's all one voice. So the reason how he got his 07 voice was by using his own voice and combining it with a radio frequency to be able to speak. But now the question is, why does he never use his method again? And Revenge of the Fallen gives us some insight into why, since Michaela says that B's having some voice problems. Yeah, you know you're in trouble. He's having voice problems. <laughs> 
Now how could Bumby be having voice problems if he got fixed up by Ratchet? Proven by the fact that he has his legs back. Well if you think about it, Bumby chose to stay with Sam instead of the rest of the Autobots. And he only went to Ratchet to get his legs fixed. I assume that Ratchet partly worked on Bumby's voice box and tweaked it a bit, but never fully fixed it, so Bumblebee could see Sam quicker. Which is what he ultimately wanted at the end of the film. So because of the tweaking, I think it led to over time for Bumby to lose the ability to connect to radio frequencies and to be able to speak through them. But now remember, Bumby did not lose 100% of his voice, since he does say a few things in Revenge of the Fallen film. For example, he says, yeah, whatever, and I love you too. Love you, B. Now when we get to Dark of the Moon, the rules for Revenge of the Fallen still apply for Bumblebee. No noteworthy changes on his voice happen in this film. But when we get to Age of Extinction, it's a whole different story. He actually speaks three times in the film. Now the uh-oh out of the three seems to be more out of place, since it's more high-pitched. But if you remember, Bumblebee's speaking voice was all over the place when he was trying to talk. As you can see, it was never at a perfect pitch 100% of the time, hence why the uh-oh sounds different. But if you compare the what was that and the what the f, they sound almost identical in voice structure, besides when Bumblebee cuts it to radio to say the f part. <laughs> So with that, it seems like Bumblebee is slowly starting to be able to talk more and more. And I believe that is because Ratchet worked on Bumblebee's voice box before Cemetery Wind was formed. Hence why Bumblebee is able to speak a bit better than he could before. Now the reason why he can speak sometimes and others he can't is because it's all based upon emotion. Let me explain. In the three examples I showed you, they were all tied to emotion. The what the f was anger, since Bumblebee was mad about how they called him decrepit. The uh oh was fear because there was no safety net in sight when he was knocked up a few hundred feet up into the air. And for the what was that, that would be surprised since that is the first time Bumblebee ever saw a Transformium transformation, with Galvatron disappearing right in front of him, turning into tiny little blocks and flying off. That would shock anyone. So with Age of Extinction out of the way, it's time to move on to Transformers The Last Night. Now before I go into Transformers The Last Night, I want to give a quick word to today's sponsor, Raycon. Now Raycon offers some of the best wireless earbuds that you can find on the market. They come in many fun and crazy colors that truly pop, and they are also very comfortable. As a bonus, they come with a whole different set of fit options to fit any size ear. The case itself can charge the Raycons up to four times in a single charge, and the best part is that the Raycon earbuds start around half the price as any other premium wireless earbud, and sound just as good at the same time. Raycons are very good for when you want to listen Listen to music or just dance, or in my case, edit a Transformers video. Now their everyday E25 earbuds are the best model yet, with 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and a more compact design that gives you a noise isolating fit. Now I've been using their everyday E25s for a little bit now, and I have to say that I'm very impressed. My most favorite part was the Bluetooth pairing. I only had to press one button on my phone and the Raycons were ready to go. I gotta say that the setup was very fast, easy, and reliable, so I would definitely recommend this to anybody who's looking for some fresh new wireless earbuds. And if you check out the link in the description, you can now get them for 50% off by using my link, buyraycon.com slash transtheories. And I want to say thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now Transformers The Last Night is a very important piece of the voice box puzzle since set 5 years after Age of Extinction, which would roughly be 2022 in movie continuity. Now if in those 5 years, Kate has been trying to fix Bumblebee's voice box with no luck whatsoever, with Day Trader supplying some from God knows where. That's what I got, new voice box for B. It's gonna work this time? You only got the good stuff, Cade. Come on. Now, it's funny that Day Trader can just find random voice boxes lying around when Ratchet can't even fix the thing, but that's besides the point. Now, in Transformers The Last Night, Bumblebee had two voices his Siri voice and his real one. Now, the Siri voice in the film was more or less a gag to be funny and should have not worked in the first place. But the best explanation that I have for the Siri voice is since there was an iPhone in the room, which you see next to Wheelie, the voice box somehow integrated the Siri voice into it. But the reason why the Siri voice scene is important is because we see Cade working on Bumblebee's voice box, meaning that he's tweaked B's original voice box to work better. This is proven because he gave Bumblebee the ability to have a spider mouth weapon, and we clearly see the voice box attached to it, which shows that Kate has modified it in some way. But the main issue that I have the Siri voice scene is, when Bumblebee rips out the voice box, we clearly see him rip out the whole thing, and yet he still has his voice box in his mouth. Now I think this was more or less a CGI error, and I speculate that after this scene, B will put in his original voice box, the one that Kate took out, and put it back into his mouth. But now let's move on to the main piece of the video, Bumblebee's real voice. Now before I get into how he got it, I'm going to explain why this is his real voice. As we saw in the last night film, Bumblebee's voice broke Optimus out of mind control. And that reaction had not happened in the first film and none of the Autobots were shocked. Only Sam was since he thought that was Bumblebee's actual voice. As I said before, the last night voice sounds more natural compared to the 2007 one. So with that out of the way, it's time to explain the big question of how Bumblebee got his real voice back. And while honestly, the most logical way he got it back was by getting smacked around by Prime, since we can clearly see him getting punched in the face. But the other reason why he got his voice back was because of the emotion effect I stated about his voice in Age of Extinction. You see, when Bumblebee's voice comes in for the first time, it sounds like it's cutting in. Like when you would have a headphone cord not fully plugged into your headphone jack. Stop! Ah! 
I am Bumblebee. Now with the emotion effect, the reason why that comes into play is because when Optimus got his blade out, that was going to be the killing blow for B. Now combine that fear of getting his voice box smacked around, and it was a perfect combo to re-jumpstart Bumblebee's voice box, giving him his voice back. But we're not done yet, since after this scene, Bumblebee goes back to using his radio voice, along with his jumbled up speaking voice, until at the very end he uses his real voice once more. So if Bumblebee finally got his real voice back, why would he go back to using his radio voice and his jumbled up voice? Well for the radio voice, it's easy to explain, since Bumblebee has integrated that as a part of himself, by quoting things that will correspond to the situation. What did you touch? Uh, I told you, homeboy. You can't touch it. What are you, like an alien or something? Any more questions you want to ask? Just one ride. <laughs> <You're cheating hard. laughs> As you can see with these examples, they all serve to be part of Bumblebee's personality, hence why he still uses the radio voice. And I found a really good article that sources most of Bumblebee's radio lines, which I'll link below. But a majority of Bumblebee's dialogue is connected to a movie or song, which shows how integrated he is with pop culture. His first line in Transformers The Last Night is a quote from Eddie Murphy. I'm tired of people messing with me. I'm tired of people messing with me. Now in the scene that he does use his radio voice after he gets his real voice, is to yet again correspond to the situation. Very mean looking. Oh, they look like wusses to me. No, they all messed up. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to why he uses jumbled up voice after he uses radio voice. And while unlike where he would try to use it to talk, it's now more or less served to be used when he gets hurt or when he grunts, not for when he's actually trying to speak. Here are all the examples when this happens. So with that in mind, like I said before, I don't think he's speaking at all, but more or less grunting. So with all those examples out of the way, I want to point something out. After each time Bumblebee talks, it still has a radio sound that accompanies it. And not just when he was trying to use his radio voice, but also when he was actually trying to speak with his jumbled up voice. So I think that radio sound is actually part of how Bumblebee speaks, since when he got his real voice back, it was still present. You saved Prime. And just like that, I think I just did the impossible, explaining how Bumblebee got his voice back. And well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my channel members and Patreons for supporting the channel. It truly means a lot, and I could not keep my channel running without you guys. So big fat thank you to you. And as always, if you enjoyed this theory in the Fixing Transformers collection, please give a like rating because it helped the channel a lot. And as always, it's been Trans Theories reminding you guys to never stop theorizing.